on once again ladies and gentlemen my name is marufu i'm going to be taking you through i um I, uh, fundamentals of it so this is our second tutorial so it means we have covered a bit on, on on our course so what we're left with is to proceed if if memory serves me right we were on microprocessors um I don't want to talk so much about microprocessors because I'm sure um, you have, 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 have read the microprocessors and you know what 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 a microprocessor is. So um, I, 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 I would want one of you guys to at least give me an ex, um, a definition of a microprocessor or an example of a microprocessor. Remember how we go about it. The more you talk, the more we, we proceed. So if you delay to talk, we will be stuck on one area. We I would want us to at least get to finish early so that we have got more time to talk about examination tips. So the the the, the quicker we do this, the, the, the better it is for us. And so um what are microprocessors, guys? Or then on to give me one example of a microprocessor. Guys, microprocessor. Yes, precisely. Uh, microprocessor, it is a data process which contains logic and controls. So, in a, this is the integrated circuit in a, in a um, arithmetic logic system controlling it. Okay, that's 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 a microprocessor. So, what does it do? Okay, microprocessor, it to my own uh, view, it input your kernel. So maybe you are typing, that is an input, or you take, you take a picture as an input, then it tells the memory what to do with that picture if you want to display it on the, on the, on the, on the, let's say on the monitor, it will display on the monitor, it takes that memory and displays it on the monitor. So, so, so in a sense, it's, it's, it's the brain of the whole operation. It's, Yes, it is the brain of the operation. When you want to calculate something, it will check that uh, it will use the uh, the uh, arithmetic logic system. So the logic system it will go also back to the to the memory. The memory will tell that there's something which is which was inputted when something which is inputted. So it will tell what it is with one plus one. Then it will have the output on the monitor. No, no, no. That's fine. That's fine. So that's 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 what that's what uh, that's a microprocessor. So you guys should 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 go on YouTube. There's a video on how microprocessors are made. Like I said before, you be fascinated the way they're made. There is something that is called the clean room that they, that is that is uh, used, whereby they don't even need a speck of of dust in that room because it it's it's a highly precision process of making this. So they need as much accuracy and cleanliness as possible in that room. So, so microprocessors. I don't think we need to draw much on microprocessors and it. We, 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 we talked up. I remember last time we talked about memory, where we said, uh, um, there is RAM, there is ROM, there is cache memory. So that's how we got to you having to research on what cache memory does and i remember asking you guys to to tell to go and research on rom programmable rom eeprom -E e -E there's a gentleman who gave us who gave us uh, acronyms for them last last tutorial so if you've got any questions on that you can you can always refer to the tutorial i i managed to upload the tutorial on on my vista so it's, it's a link that just goes to, to 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 YouTube, so that at least you can you can you can 
we get a chance to 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 research on them. But what you now need to know is what does CMOS do? The cheap metal oxide semiconductor. It provides it provides a flexibility and expand expandability to the computer. So it it. Have you ever wondered why when you switch off your computer, 90% of the times, time will be correct? It's because it's because of this. That's where we talked about our own self-test and we talked about BIOS, BIOS last on the on our previous tutorial. So I don't want I don't want us to to to, to dwell much on, 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 on that. So last time we spoke about numbering system, I, I wanted everyone to know how to convert binary to decimal, binary to hexadecimal, and vice versa. It's it's very imperative for you to 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 to, to, to know these things. So since we are using Teams at the moment, I can't really demonstrate. So what I'll do is I'm going to create another video for for number for number systems. So you can't escape number systems because you're going to get to part four, which is in Zwashima number system. So this, we, we don't need to do all much on it because I'm just going to create a video and give it up to give it to you guys. So topic of the day, the system unit. This is where officially our second tutorial is started now. I asked you guys this topic, this question in your assignment. So I am very sure you guys can uh, uh, can answer this question. Okay, so what we have on display right now is, is a system unit. A lot of people confuse it with a CPU. It it's it's industrial jargon to call it a CPU because that is where everything is centralized. So uh, those are the components of, the, of of a CPU of a system unit. So this is somewhat universal to every computer that that's there so it being a laptop if you open a laptop you're mostly going you're going to find more or less the same things they might not just be in the same shape or size for example ram on a laptop and ram on a desktop they've got different sizes but that's mainly due to what to to the motherboard because the, the motherboard for for a laptop needs to be portable so they they have to try and limit on size but on a CPU, size isn't really much of an issue. So from there, there is storage drive. We talked about storage drives. These are your hard disk drives, your solid state drives. This, this, the, this, there's a company, I think it's IBM, they made uh, a, a, a drive, which is a hybrid between a solid state drive and a hard disk drive. We remember, we, I asked you guys to, to, to research on the differences between hard drive and solid state drive. We covered some of these things. Okay, so from there, we go on electrical power supply. So the, the, the storage drives, they, are, they come in two sizes. The ones that you find in your laptop and the ones that you find in the desktop. They both have a connection called the SATA connection. It's serial ATA. Um, I'm, I'm going to give you this time to go and research on, on, on SATA. But in, on, on legacy hard drives, you'd find something called an ID, IDE belt. So it was a gray belt with a lot of wires. So that belt meant it were operations were going to be taken. The system information or data is going to be transmitted from the hard drive to the motherboard in a parallel way. In a parallel way is whereby we're saying, it, if, if you're sending something, everything is sent via all the bells that are there. But on SATA, we have maximum, maximum um, six pins. So that there are seven pins. So they, they transmit, they transmit um, data in a serial manner. It's serial means one after the other, but in, in our case, it's, it's 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 proven to be faster to, for 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 such for such data to be transmitted serially than for it to be transmitted parallel. So that's how that's how the evolution came from 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 para from IDE to SATA. So moving on to power supply, the power supply that we have in, mostly in our computers are what we call 
what's it called idx yes whereby there are certain number of pins that are connected to with different color codes whereby each each power is a certain component of the motherboard so so if, if with without this so without the storage devices your computer can't can't boot without power supply there's no power coming to the motherboard so your your, your computer cannot be powered on so if on, on your laptops on your laptops we now we have something called the power pack where if, if Okay, is someone looking? Okay. So, without computers can't switch on, but laptops now have got a different mechan a different make whereby there is a battery. So, without the power pack, the battery will be the one that's acting as a power supply. So, this is where voltage is regulated, and if like I said before, there are different wires with different color codes where every every green every wire has got a specific purpose. So you discover that in legacy motherboards, we had a different type of power supply, the connection to the board to to now. So with, with time they're continuously improving. So when you want now to to create a, a, let's say a gaming laptop, you you would need you would need a power supply that provides more power because there's going to be power, more, more power that's going to be used when when you are um, doing your operations. When we say gaming laptop, we mean something that is high end. We we want maximum speed with maximum graphics and maximum storage. So your storage, normally what common practice is common practice for gamers is they would have two drives. It's left. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Excuse me. A slave drive, which which is a solid state drive, because like we said before, a solid state drive is faster than a hard disk drive because they're not rotating. They're not rotating. Um, they're not rotating uh, parts of the, of the hard drive. So so data is accessed instantaneously. So it's it's, it's much faster and it's 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 less volatile as compared to 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 not volatile. It's less fragile. As compared to solid state to hard drive, hard disk drive. If you drop a hard disk drive, uh, that, that's it. Uh, chances are your hard drive is crashed. But a solid state drive, it's like a flash. We've dropped flash drives several times. Say, can you kindly stop sharing your screen? Remove your video and oh, kindly stop sharing your screen. Uh -huh. Say, can you please stop sharing your screen? I don't know. Mugundi is very kind. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Nyasha. Can... Yeah. Please stop sharing your screen. Nasha, remove your video and stop sharing your screen. Please try by if you're not if you're not speaking, please mute your mic and do not share your screen and remove video. You we, we don't we don't necessarily need to to see um what's going on. So as as I was saying, where were we? So to the power supply from the power supply. If you're building a gaming laptop, a gaming machine, you common practice is whereby they, they put a solid state drive. It's expensive as, as as compared to um, a hard drive. So the solid state drive would be maybe a five five two fifty six gig uh, hard drive. Then by virtue of it being fast, it 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 it, it accesses data on it. Ac data access to it is very fast. It's just that the faster. So they would want that because when you're doing games and uh, you need you need those that real time feel of, of a computer. So that was common practice. So you need a, a, a bigger power power supply with more with more voltages compared to a normal computer. Um, from there, we move on to they say is a power plug. Then that's fine. Fan, fan is strict, simply there to to cool the power supply. Remember, the it's it's 
whenever there's power, there's heat that's going to be generated. So the fan is there. Normally, on a normal computer, you'd have three fans, one on your power supply, one on your, on your, on your processor, your microprocessor. There's a heat sink between the microprocessor and the fan so that the heat will be sucked will be sucked from the processor out 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 into the into the seat in the system unit then there is one on the casing which is now blowing it from the computer blowing it outside so that those are um, on 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 average um the number of the number of of of, of fans you'd find but the, when you're now dealing with gaming laptops now gaming computers rather you would get a computer being being cooled by fluid so you probably need to read about 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 how different methods of cooling of cooling of excuse me different methods of cooling a, a computer so now when you now move from these microcomputers to work, workstations to supercomputers now uh, google has a, a data warehouse which is generated which generates huge amounts of heat but for them to remedy this situation they 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 built the institution close to a, a dam so they will be using that water to to help cool the, the, the data warehouse and the supercomputer so the different means and ways to cool to cool a computer but cheapest the, the most effective way depends on the amount of heat that's being generated. So for a standard, for a normal workstation, one fan could do. But when you're dealing with gaming laptops that or in servers that generate huge amounts of, of, of heat. So now you need to factor out how you're going to remedy the heat. Because as long as there is heat, your computer will not function well. Your computer has what's called an optimum, an optimum functional heat. Heat, heat it can, it can, it can, um, it can tolerate or, or accommodate. So this generally means it, it works best at a certain temperature. So if the temperature is too high, performance is is is, is lowered. You actually risk the, you actually risk losing your processor, your graphics card, or even your hard drive. Offline. So with 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 um, legacy motherboards, you'd get capacitors that are not all solid, all, all solid capacitors. So these capacitors would blow. Then they would create what's called um, a dry joint. A dry joint. I don't know if if you've ever seen this. Back then, you you would have a TV which flickers. Then when the TV is flickering, you'd slap on the TV on top of the TV. Then the TV start work, starts to work, behave normally. That is because there are dry joints that are there. So when you're heating your, your, your computer, you're simply just trying to create connection between those 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 um those 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 joints than carry. So that was the major hindrance of, of what's it called now. My capacitors that were big were made back then. But nowadays we have we have we have chips and we've got solid capacitors. So that is um uh, uh somewhat a thing of the past uh, input output port it, it it all depends with what you want to this is generally this is basically your assignment so input output port this is basically we, we talked about this it could be anything from usb to vga anything that has um where you plug in, in peripheral devices. Peripheral devices are devices or gadgets or anything that you cannot, that is not physically within the system unit. So we've got cameras, we've got printers, we've got a mouse, we've got keyboards. All those are what, what are called peripheral devices. Okay, I think I have talked nonstop for a while. So now I would want to hear you, your voices now. We have something called a modem that is on next on there. What is a modem? It's for you guys. What is a modem? Modem. What is a modem? 
Guys, what's the motive? Yes, Dylan. Uh, so, uh, a modem, its job, its job is to convert um, uh, is to convert digital data into analog data and vice versa. That's, that's correct. Um, modem stands for modulator, to modulator. So what what it does is, it it's 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 a it's a it's a it's, a, it's one of those devices that I'll call legacy devices. Um, it's a it's a network device which used to use a technology called dial-up. I'm very sure a few of you know. Now I got nowadays you just know you guys know fiber and ADSL. Back then you'd have a dial-up connection where you the modem actually dials to your it dials to the internet. Then you towards what must those funny static sounds. Then it dials, it converts, it converted your digital to analog because uh, digital and analog have got different advantages by then. Back then it was still in the analog, analog um, era. So analog would travel longer distances. So it basically it used your, your, your normal telephone lines, but the connection was very slow. It was very, very slow. So it's, 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 it's a device that I probably is obsolete. You you might not find any modems now. What you are calling modems nowadays, those modems where you put your, your SIM card and um, you connect using your SIM card, though, that's not the modem. Yes, it's a modem because it basically functions more or less in the same way. But for, 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 oh, for the purposes of this discussion, we are going to zero in on the modems that are legacy where you it was a, it was an it, it's, it's it's basically old technology which is now being redundant so they i think someone came up with the idea or the clever idea of using your 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 sim card then they created their those portable modems that you now have but that they originated from those old modems that used. so this is one of those um redundant technologies that that probably is no longer in use so this is a this is a network device it operates in a layer called network layer we are going to talk about this later when we when we talk about the OSI models so one of the other things that is now obsolete is now is something called a hub has anyone ever heard of the word hub Hub. Leona, you've never heard of the word hub. Not, not those micro hubs that you hear when people borrow you or lend you money. I'm saying a hub, like a, a network device called a hub. It's okay. If you guys don't want to participate, Let's proceed. So a sound card basically is was a um, was um, a card which had um, audio jacks. My jacks are you know, the microphone jack and the the, the earphone jacks. A legacy motherboard. The legacy motherboards didn't come with those things. But nowadays it's 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 proprietary. Every motherboard comes with that, so there's no more need for 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 a card. What what we're calling a card? What, what are we calling a card, by the way? What's a card? Pamunos watching it's a network card, a sound card, or a graphics card. What's a card? A card. A card could data. The long ago, it was used for something like if you want any better quality audio. You buy a audio card, or if you want to have an analog, analog video card where you can view TVs on a on a computer, you can buy the card, so you can input on the, the touch board. 
No, the very correct. A, a card is what you would want to upgrade your computer to. For example, you, you want better graphics, but your, your computer doesn't support, doesn't, is not built with that hardware. So you would buy a card to, ex, to and place them in what we call expansion slots. And then you, you, until you know my expansion slots, we've got PCI, we've got that. Uh, you, you, you learn more about this when you're doing computer hardware and repair and maintenance. So basically for the purposes of this, we, we just need to know what cards are. So they they use they they used to expand the hardware of a of a computer of a of a, of a system unit. If you didn't have if you didn't have uh, USB ports on your computer, yes, back then you'd have a computer that USB. You'd buy a USB card and you'd place it there. But nowadays, um, computers come with at least four four USB ports, um, or the jack and everything. So you, life, life has been made easier for you. Then monitor, that's where your graphics card comes into play. We, we slot for expansion. But we've got expansion slots, there are different types of expansion slots. I just gave you one um, uh, PCI. You, you're based into to research a bit about, about PCI slots. Then, Catch memory, extension of catch. What did we say catch memory? RAM, basically it's memory that is designed to increase the rate at which um, processes are being taken, are being processed, or threads are processing uh, processes. Um, or threads are working on processes. RAM. So when, when, when the process is being worked on and it's in RAM, it could be overloaded, so there is need for additional fast but volatile memory, which temporarily stores information while it's being processed. So that's the major reason why cache memory is there. But uh, when we were in the Pentam age, we, we cache memory was extremely low. But nowadays you get cache memory close to maybe 16 meg or 32 meg. Oh, I said maybe tenth generation processors. So the, the sixteen meg might seem very slow, but when it comes to processing, that is a lot of memory. So we've got L one, L two, and L three cache memory. We we agreed we're going to talk about this um, when 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 we. We agreed we're going to research about this, so I'm not going to talk about this. Everyone had a task to research about this. Um, microprocessors, we talked about microprocessors. Um, ROM chips, what are ROM chips? Anyone? Let's, let's hear from someone who hasn't said anything. Pass more. Pass more, what's a ROM chip? Uh, what I understand by ROM chip, it is a like what a chip it is designed with programs. Uh, a chip it is designed in a program. The program I should do you know basira some of the processes in the in the CPU. Remember, we we talked about. Let me show you. We talked about. Pro read-only memory, programmable read-only memory, EEPROM, the EEPROM. So where this is where these are going to be housed. I, 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 are we in agreement or? Uh, sorry, I didn't get you. No, I'm saying we, we, we spoke about, about, um, about, Read only memory. So that's where it's going to be stored. Remember, ROM, is it volatile or it's non volatile? It's volatile. So if you say it's volatile, then. Uh, 
<laughs> and it so that's that's where it's going to be housed. That's where it's going to be housed. So you that's where it's going to be housed. So any any questions so far on 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 system unit? If there's anything that we left out or anything that we need to add. We're not going to remove anything. We're just going to add a few things that we probably might have. Questions? If you don't have questions, I'll be. I'll, 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 I've got several questions. Of you. All right. If you don't have questions, let me ask questions. So, so. Where is the operating system going to be housed? Operating system, where is it going to be housed? Where is it going to be kept? I'm not trying to get to operating system. Sir. In fact, uh, what's an operating system? What's an operating system? I think an operating system is going to be housed in the hard drive. Hard drive. Hello. Hello. Why did you ask? What did you? Can you explain your answer? Why is it in the hard drive? Uh, I think because yeah, it it requires memory and it, it has to be stored somewhere so that it could run and operate. So it is going to be housed in the hard drive. That's when we create partition and something like that. That's correct. The operating system is going to be housed in the hard drive because the hard drive is not volatile. When you switch it off, you still get everything up to switch it back on. Yes, yes, Nyash. Alan, yes, you can. Okay. So, 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 if if we're saying the operating system is housed in the hard drive, so what's the need for ROM? What's the need for RAM? What's the need for cache memory? Why do we need those things when? when we have got a, a huge storage like hard drive. Sir? Yes, yes, proceed, sir. So I believe the reason we would need the RAM is for, because when we're using a, a computer, we want to be able to, we want to be able for it to process quickly or to retrieve memory quickly. For if you are, suppose you are, you were gaming, you want for you in order for your process for you for the process to be fast, you need memory that 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 is fast. Okay, so 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 what 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 basically? Lead your task was the memory is already available for processing, so we are, we use the RAM. Uh, the, I think that's the main reason for that for RAM and other memories. Okay, Nyash, do you have uh, a different perspective to this? Nyash, okay, Dylan, go ahead. Okay, so so uh, you 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 all you all you all answered it correctly. You you just need to the store. the RAM yes 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 it proceed it's fine. The all the RAM uh, is important because uh, it is used by applications 
uh, to access uh, for applications memory to be accessed uh, is quickly. No, that, that's that's what that's what uh, the the gentleman who said before you. But it's okay. That's 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 correct because at the end of the day, you just need to understand the functions of the ROM and RAM and catch memory. The, 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 the answers are in how each functions. So you need to know in detail what, what RAM does. You need to know what cache memory does. You need to know what read memory does. You need to know the advantages and disadvantages of each. When you know the advantages and disadvantages of each, it's, it should be a very easy question to answer. So we, we talked about operating systems. How many types of operating systems do we have? Does anyone know any type of operating system? Sir? Operating system. Okay, let's start with this. Let's start with system software before we go to operating system. What are system software? I'm not sure to erase you guys. Sir? We've got two types of software. We've got system software. We've got application software. Application software sits on, on system software. That's where you've got my databases, my Word, my, my Explorer. We're using Teams. These are application softwares. They are applications. They have got different varieties. Remember, we we, we, I asked you about open source software. So the, all, of the, all of this feeds into that. So now we, we don't want to talk much about, about application software because they have got a different variety. I want us to talk about system software. What is system software? Sir? Yes, you can proceed, sir. Uh, system software, so would, this would be the software which you know which manages uh, like the computer's resources, like the drivers. Okay. It manages what? It would manage. Uh, it manages a computer's system. A computer system, like like, my, like drivers. Okay. Like okay. like the net com components at the computer, like the network inside the driver side, okay, uh, management correct. side. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. A a anyone, anyone, to give it a give it a try. Uh, Donald Stolle. Okay. No. Yes, you want to give it a try. System yeah. software. Yeah, I think uh, it's a software that enables the user to communicate easily with the computer, with the computer hardware, and efficiently control the operations of the computer. Yeah, that's very correct. That's very correct. So basically, now we're just saying there's now need there's now need for an interaction between the user and the hardware. Remember, this whole time we're talking of hard drives, processors, motherboards, and everything. Now there, there is need for an interaction between those things and the user. So the only way we can communicate with, with that hardware is by, by the use of what? Of system softwares. So uh, system software, there is operating systems, utility program, device drivers, language translators. And so those are the, the theoretical four. Operating systems. What are operating systems? I want to hear probably a voice of someone who's who's never said anything. Uh, Clancy, Nick Clancy. Yeah, okay, I'm in, sir. Yes. Uh, what's an operating system? Well, uh, an operating system is a set of instructions or programs that uh, are used to control, manage, and supervise the computer performance uh, basing on the hardware and software interaction. 
Chibaba maka gads rama operating system here, because your definition is comprehensive. <laughs> no, that's that's. Yes, uh, yes, it's a set of it's a set of instructions uh, that uh, manages, controls, and money and supervises the performance of a computer. That, that's correct. That's correct. So basically, um, um, an operating system, according to your module, just has um, three functions. It manages resources and it's an interface, and it helps. Um, manage and control applications. Remember, that's where you install programs, that's where you run programs, that's where you uninstall programs. So that's, that's, that's those are three major functions of, 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 a, of an operating system. Can anyone give me an example of an operating system that is not Windows? Sir? Yes. Uh, Mac OS and, and Linux. Linux. Where did Linux originate from? Unix, sir. I don't know. The... Yeah, it, Linux is. Linux is a very good I don't It's not. It's not. It's not. It started from. It started off as Linux. It's as Unix. And um, I'm not so sure about the origins. If you're saying there's a guy named Linux who developed it, but all I know is it's it's a it's it's a collection or a group of open source software. You don't buy it; it's free. There is source code for for for, for Linux. So for Linux, you've got different versions. You've got CentOS. You've got Ubuntu. There the, 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 the is Kali Linux. So you can have your own version of Linux. Oh, but it, it's got a core, the yeah, Unix. That's just basically Linux. What, what about what about what do what do Apple devices use? Sorry? What do Apple devices use? So they are they use Mac OS and I iOS. iOS. So that's an operating system, huh? Yes. How about how about Android? Is it an operating system? Yes, sir. Android is an operating system. So, so we've got, we've got, call, what's that one? Anna, Anna, you, you guys have used phones. We've got, uh, Anna, Nokia used Debian and what not. Yes, what? yes proceed. No, Nokia, Nokia uses Symbian. And Sim uh, there is also, yeah, and then Huawei uses Harmony OS and uh, Google uses Chrome OS. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 remember, there was a trade. There were trade wars that happened about two years ago, a year ago, where where uh, the United States government claimed that the uh, Chinese are spying on on the government through their devices. So it Huawei was forced to not not to trade with American companies. So that's how Huawei came up with their own operating system. But back then, it it, it used to have Android. So with this, it brought in a lot of a lot of um, how can I put it conflicts and, and debates whereby uh, we, who is going to suffer with these trade wars? Because at the end of the day, look at it this way: China produced iPhone, your iPhone. You buy it in in, in, in states, but the processor and most of the components they were going to be, they were made in China. So 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 so. That's one of the. That's basically the reason why OS and Anonza always ended up having to to produce their own different operating system. Any other operating system that you guys you guys can think of? No, it's okay. If you don't have, it's fine. So we have something called a utility program. What's a utility program? Anyone? All right. We 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 we've probably forgot. To, I've probably forgot to ask some. What is multi-processing? And how is it different from multitasking?
sir? Yes, you proceed. Then. Uh, multi processing, so I believe, like, is this just it's processing multiple things at the same time? What with multitasking, sir? It would mean like it's not necessarily processing multiple things at the same time, but rather you're doing. Okay, so you're uh, doing suppose you're doing some. You're do, you may be doing two things, multiple things at the same. You may be doing a word document while browsing, but rather than the computer browse, uh, processing those two things at the same time, it will process whatever is of more importance first. All right. So, 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 if, if, so, what's the difference now between a process and a task? Because that will that will be key. Remember, we said multi-processing and multitasking. So, what's a task and what's a process? Anyone? It's okay. If you, if you, it's okay. <laughs> if you, anyone, anyone to give it a try. Yes, Brenda. Okay, so the difference between multi-processing and multitasking is that multi-processing actually refers to the use of two or more central processing units within a single computer system whereby multitasking refers to the um, use of the use or performance of new tasks within the without exiting the current tasks that being executed yeah that's 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 fair that's fair i'll give you nine and a half out of the tips, so. <laughs> thank you that's fine so so Processing has a lot to do with, with the processor. The processor nowadays, an i7 has got four process four it's it's four processors and eight threads. So so each thread can process different processes at a certain at a given time. Whereas when we're saying multitasking, now we're saying these are the tasks that a CPU can now perform. So all you need to do is know the difference between task and the process. Process, hence my processors are mechanical. So multitask enable users to perform new tasks without exiting from the current task. You 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 can after typing you can open window Windows Media Player and listen to music while you're typing. That's those are those are two different tasks. All right. So so multi-user it simply means that it, it can accommodate different users, whereby you're gonna have to you're going to have to put your, your username and your password, and your part you can even forgo passwords. What of batch processes? What are batch processes? Anyone to give us batch processes? Let's hear from someone who's never said anything. Let's see. Uh, Petros, batch processes. Petros. Batch processes. It, 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 it says batch and it says process. There, it says batch and process. You're processing batches. Do you know what a batch is? If you do a transaction, they'll do batches, they'll process the transactions in USA or at 12 and at 4. So if you do a transaction at 8, you need to wait until 12 for your transaction to, to go through. That, that's just processing batches. I don't know, it's okay. Um, so what are utility software? Utility softwares. Utility pro. 
All right, we've got we've got three that are left. We've got utility programs, we've got device drivers, we've got language translators. So anyone to give us anything. Yes, Cassandra. Yes, Cassandra. Um, I think a utility program is a program for carrying out a routine function. For example. Yes. Um Maybe we can say a uh, batch in a way. I'm not sure. Because uh, it's routine. Okay. All right, uh, Brenda. Um, batch processing actually refers to the a technique in which an operating system collects the program's data and data together in batches before process the processing starts. That's, that's correct. A, a, an example. I, I like examples. Okay. For example, batch processing uses um, in cases can be found in banks, hospitals, and um, accounting areas. They they process everything. They yeah. Well, probably if it's twelve, then they process it, turns everything. All right. That's fine. That's fine. Um. Uh. Nick. Nick Clancy. I don't know if I got it right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's my name. Say, <laughs> well, examples, good examples for building what 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 we are using in electricity payments. We want to uh, use the pay payroll electricity billing payroll systems. Those are types of batch processing. Where and also water billing systems where uh, one would come to your house and collect some meter readings over a month, then the, that data will be put in a certain program, program and executed at uh, one go, then you have your meter reading for your, your, what, your payments, your bill. No, that's fine, that's fine, that's correct. That's, that's, correct. that's correct, Miss Nyasha. Okay, um, a utility program, it is a software that is designed to maintain a, a, a computer or to configure, for example, a, an antivirus. I beg to differ. An antivirus is an application. Mm -hmm. It sits on, it sits on, it sits on, on the operating mm -hmm. system. A utility soft, okay, so, uh, Fadzai. Uh, hello. Yes, proceed now. Uh, I want to talk about the utility software. The That's utility, fine. The utility software is a system oh. software that oh. helps, that helps to maintain the proper and smooth functioning of a computer system. Uh, examples, we have got file management tools and compression tools. <laughs> That, that's okay. That's fine. But I was, I was under the impression that the word utility would, would somewhat guide uh, on, or, on, on your, all your own technicians on utility. So, all right. So no, no one wants to tackle device drivers and language translators. Huh? No one, everyone is scared. Do, do you know what are, what device drivers are? You know? Yes, you can proceed, sir. Device drivers. Okay. But, 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 uh, you, you are right, by the way, Madam Brenda, for 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 for, for what's it called, Mama. Uh, my utility, my utility uh, software. Uh, device drivers, device driver. I wonder. Chawanda, device driver. Device drivers. I think these are these are softwares which allow input and output devices to communicate. Uh, 
Okay. Okay. Let, let me let, let me try and put this uh, as simple as, as I can. Okay. Remember, we say our operating system is now the bridge between hardware and software. Hardware and the, the person that's using the, the computer is the bridge. So, in the event where you put a new hardware component there. The, the operating system needs a way to communicate with that new piece of hardware. So every piece of hardware that is on your computer has got a way to communicate with the operating system. So this this is where device drivers come. They, they are there to make control. If you go on your device manager, uh, you file manager, right click compu my computer, right click my computer, you get properties. From properties, you get device manager, device drivers. From device drivers, you'll be able to, to see all, all, the, all the hardware, the hardware that's there. Each and every hardware has got device drivers that link each with the operating system for each to be able to function properly. So last but not least, language translators. What are language translators? Hello. Yes, sir. Go ahead. I think it's a program which can convert uh, a, a high or uh, I mean like low level language into high level language understandable by the computer. Okay. Anyone else? Yes. Yes. I think that's fine. So now look what more now what what you processing. So I don't think anyone will be confused with 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 those people. Are we in agreement? So what is virtual memory? Virtual memory. Then I want to give it a try. Virtual Sir? memory. Oh, Amanda. Sir? Um, a virtual memory is um, a feature of an operating system that is responsible for memory management. So, in this case, in, in visual memory, the hard disk will be treated as the RAM, and therefore, um, it actually works with the help of visual memory. Then, tem uh, we can also temporarily increase the size of the logical memory as from the hard disk, and all the space of hard disk can be used as the RAM in visual memory. Okay. Uh, anyone to give it a try? You're you correct, yes. I, I want to explain after everyone has attempted. Uh, Donald. Uh, I think uh, virtual memory is an imaginary, uh, imaginary memory. Uh, it is a part of the hard disk which has been purchased for you and cannot be used for storing files. Okay, that's correct. Uh, Dylan. Sir. I was going to say that with virtual memory, sir, it's where part of uh, the address allocated to act as the memory. Should the application which uh, the computer you needs, the computer you, which the application which requires memory, should the memory which the com computer has a tool later for the application needed, a, po a portion of the hard drive will be des designated to act as memory. No, that, that's correct. Mr. Nyasha, please remove your video. Do not share your video. Nyasha, please don't share your video. Okay, so 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 virtual memory, like if whatever said, it's correct. It's you'd want to expand your RAM. So you create virtual memory as a part 
it's, 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 it's a part of the hard drive which you configure or is configured for you automatically by the operating system, which acts as, a, as just a way of improving what's around. It works in more or less the same way. So you can increase it or you can decrease it. But if you don't know how it's done, you can simply just have the operating system do that for you. How you can go about it, you go to click on your hard drive, right click, uh, go to properties, then you go to advanced options. After advanced, you go to your performance, you click, then you click to your menu. So you can, you can, it's just there to improve the performance of the, of, of, the, of the computer. You can either increase it or decrease it to have the operating system do it for you. All right, so proceeding now, we talked about multitasking, multi-user, multi-processing, page processing, and virtual memory. We've managed to talk about it. Now, um, any questions? I don't want us to talk about application software because I feel everyone knows, everyone knows application software. Sir? Yes, sir. Uh, I tend to confuse between types of um, operating systems and examples of operating systems. Like I read somewhere where my types of operating systems were given something like real time. Then the examples, that's what we talked about is Nana Windows and stuff. So I need clarification there. No, 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 you, you, you're very correct. Because there are different, we, we there are different types of, of, of processes that are there, of operating systems that are there. So those, the ones that we gave were examples of operating system. Okay. There, there, those, those are examples that I'll find. Um, Android applications and Amstrad and iOS, those are mobile operating systems. There are batch operating systems, there are network operating systems, there are real operating systems. I'm sure that, that there's, a, there's a big issue. Each performs a different task and each um, is best suited for a different, um, how can I put it, computer, type of computer. For example, you can't, it's, it's difficult for you to put uh, in, in a mobile application on a, on a multitasking operating system, our Windows and everything. So, so, so yes, you're, you're very right. There are different types of operating system. In those type of operating systems, we've got now different examples of operating systems. So I, I also wanted to ask, um, we, we had something called open source software. What is open source software? Sir? Yes, sir, go ahead. Uh, open source software said this is now software where the source code is readily available to anyone for for free to modify. Like Linux. Yes. That's open source. And open open source does not necessarily mean it needs to be an operating system. It it it's it that's why it's called open source software. It's not open source operating system. You can have you, when, when you're now doing your programming, you you discover that when you that you've got what are called frameworks, where you just adopt that framework. It's basically a piece of open source code software which you can add or edit to 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 your to your to to your program or project so that it, it gives you the best results. An example would be Moodle. Moodle is an open source software where you can get and edit it and create whatever content management system you want to you want to create so those are different types of those are just uh, that's it about what's called my, my open source software yes bonisi i hope i got it right bonisi you just to learn what Okay, I, the, the, my hand was raised when I was, when I was uh, wanted to ask about virtual memory. 
Okay. Was the person answered or still pending? Uh, well, Victor, I just wanted to ask: is, Can someone use a, a USB flash? It is a visual memory. You you can't use it because it needs to be on your primary device where your operating system is sitting. Okay. You can't use it. Okay, sir. Yes. Uh, blessing, Tetwa. Blessing, Mutetwa. Fat, fat, die. Uh, okay, losing. hello. Okay. Yeah, oh, sorry. I, I, my mic fell off. I just wanted to say something about open systems, which namely, uh, my favorite open, open, open system, which is Android app, Android uh, open system. Because there are two types of, there are two types Alfred, of Alfred, system. Alfred, why are you sharing your screen? Guys, I simply gave an instruction the first time. Don't share anything. You you disrupt the the, the whole the whole the whole proceedings. If you don't share anything. Okay. Yes, proceed. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. I just wanted to say something about the uh, Android apps operating system. There are two types of Android systems right now. There's the one which was made by Adon uh, by Ruben. Which uh, Google adopted, and uh, okay. there's this one Google, which is used right now, is called DMS, which you use, which our okay, way was banned from, which is Android. The Google one was a uh, was a uh, Android was the uh, way was uh, banned from that, but it can okay. only it can use the open system, which Android right now it is it, it can which uh, way is using also with. I'm on OS, which is also an open, open, open uh, system. Open source. And it's no, that's oh, fine. That's Thank you so much for that. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks. Uh, Fadai. Uh, Yelosi, uh, I wanted to ask if open source software can be released under a license. You, you, you can't license something that is not yours. Basically, this is someone is saying, guys, I've made this software. I don't want to patent it, but I want everyone to benefit from it. So you can have it, guys, for your for your use. So you can't license something that's open source. Okay. The, the, I, it's, it's not yours. You're, you're using it. You're only using it. Someone created it for you. I got know for the benefit of everyone, there's no need for me to patent this. There's no need for me to license this. So it's best if I just have everyone use it for, 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 for free. So you know you can't use it. Yes, yes, Brenda. OK, uh, from my own point of view, I think open, soft, open source software is a software which with source codes that anyone can inspect, modify, or any ends. Thus, this means that any user can uh, manipulate or change the software. Either way, that, 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 that's that's correct. That's correct. That's so so for now, I think we let's let's proceed and it. Um, we we're going to talk about something that is um that you guys were debating about. That's something called communication. I, I deliberately left application software because I believe you guys can read and understand those applications that you, you can you can have. So I want us now to talk about communication. What 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 is communication? Communication. Like, like now we are communicating. What is that? Uh, communication. Communication is the exchange of information between two, two users, that's the receiver and the sender. Okay. I, 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 okay, I also deliberately left programming languages because you, there are just five generations and you guys can read and understand those generations. I don't think there's much of an issue. With, with, I, I want to tackle those, those areas that are, that are tricky. Like for an example, this operating this this uh, communication. 
So basically, communication is exchange of information between two or three parties and between two or more parties. I don't know. Just... Yes. So we've got a dagger and it, this one that you see. It, it is, it is, I don't think it's a very difficult tag. But if you, there are a lot of misconceptions with, with, with that tag because it's a case whereby people fail to understand the basics of this, the basis of, of, of this, this tag. We've got a send, we've got a receive. So what we just want to do is to get information from send receive so in 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 multiplex systems the sender can become the receive because there's exchange of information uh it's 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 it's, it's two-way communication and it, so if, if if i'm sending if i'm talking like now and it, I'm the sender and you guys are the receiver. But when you respond, you become the sender and I become the receiver. Are, are, are we in agreement? Yes. So, so, Parkunzi, Parkunzi Apple, there is, there is, Because there is noise up, you 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 just need to know good. So send information from. I'm trying to talk to you. My phone codes whatever it is that's there. Then your phone or your computer decodes from there, and in between there's something called noise. Noise comes in all forms and sizes. It could be actual noise. It could be electromagnetic noise it could be it could be anything that generally disrupts communication and it, we are in agreement it's just anything that disrupts communication you guys have played this game i don't know okay okay so i don't know whether you guys played this game before but we played a game called broken telephone whereby one whispers a word or a sentence in someone's ear then you can sit around and one whispers until you try to 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 get to um, hear what the message you sent. You discover that because of those, the, the information that you sent is somewhat distorted. Yes. So with this, with this, if you get more, if you get into detail with, with something called networks, whereby devices needs to communicate via the internet with little or less noise, you discover that they are um, processes in which these things, this, this noise, they try to, to remedy. For example, there is something called, if you're using TCP, there's something called the three-way handshake lemma, where the sender sends an acknowledge, a, a, a request, which, no, I want to talk to you. Then the receiver sends back a, a request and says, an acknowledgement, yes, you can. But because I want to talk to you also, the, the sender, the receiver sends a request. So this happens three times, two communication starts. Then that's the request. And when they're done, they just end the finalization, finalization. So at the end of the day, what they just try to do is limit noise. And so at this, I don't think there's much of a problem when it comes to communication. But the issue now comes in the format in which we are going to 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 to, to communicate. There are there are there is analog signal. In analog signal, we have got frequency, phases, and aptitude. You can you can read on on on, on that. I don't want to draw much on that. And we've got digital signal. Digital, it's it's ones and zeros. One represents um, how can I put it, an increase, and a zero is basically if they're coming back to to your x-axis or 
going below your x-axis depends with the nature which which your your your, your signal has been struck. but again all that you can read and understand now we come to modes of of, of, of communication we talked uh, we talked briefly about sata and ide whereby we said they moved away from id as part from from ide because it was parallel and they moved to what's called sata which is serial and basically we're saying parallel we send a it's depending on the number of wires but no more circumstances the eight we send eight bits or bytes at the same time and the receiver needs to get them and decode to code those bits but now serial sata or okay not sata such I, sata is an example of serial it's one in front of the app and the check sums on on how uh, on whether information is obtained or information that's obtained is accurate or not so in serial we've got asynchronous transmission and obviously synchronous transmission asynchronous with, with when we say we're not really bothered on on on, on i don't remember i i talked about the way check claim we're not really worried about that so with, with when you when you when you get to your your to, to when you get to do the networking you discover that synchronous becomes tcp and asynchronous becomes udp so are you you get understand when you when you proceed so please mute your mute your mics when you're not when you're not uh, when you're not responding so synchronous transmission it's there is a lot of checks on that are there which brings me to something called um a direction of communication whereby we're saying data flow direction in a in a simplex communication that is like the tv the canal but tv you don't have a means of responding all you get is whatever the, the broadcast corporation is broadcasting to so that means that's just one way communication from the center to the city there is there is no feedback there's no um means of getting feedback so an example is your tv can someone give me another example an example of simplex um the radio the radio now becomes duplex it becomes half duplex communication transmission why because there's there's response i i i i i i talk and when i say over and i cut you can also communicate to me but we cannot communicate at the same time one is to communicate after the other so that is that is that is that is uh, half duplex say i meant the broadcasting radio that like is efm can you really respond to that oh uh, okay you mean radio i thought you meant those talkie talkies oh sorry <laughs> they are real, real. Okay. Yes, yes, uh, Brenda. Co a computer to printer communication. Um, yes, but I, I want us to try and move away from a situation where we're talking of nodes. For now, that's node communication. The, 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 the printer is little to nothing to communicate back with. But if you notice, the computer could also be linked using what's called um, a USB. So for, 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 for purposes of this discussion, probably we just need to limit it to, 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 to humans, not nodes or, or devices. Yes. Um, 
That's fine. So, all right, uh, Nyasha, your hand is up. Father, your hand is up. Uh, I wanted to give an example of a keyboard. No, no, what, what we're trying to do now, like I said before, let's, let's leave, let's not uh, try to, to deal with devices. Let's talk. I gave an example of a TV station. Uh, the other lady gave us an example of a radio station. So those are practical examples of we want to try and use um, communication between units, not devices. So if, 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 if you don't have any more examples, that's fine. So half duplex, like I explained before, one communicates after the other. There's no simultaneous communication between between use uh, sender and receive. So an example is the walkie-talkie. Um, if there's anyone with another example, they are free, they are free to share. Uh, from that, we've got now full duplex. This is what we used when you're using probably your phones or your WhatsApp messages or whatever it is. So there's information. Information occurs simultaneously. You can send and receive information. So that those are um, the different types of transmission. Do not confuse transmission. Do not confuse these two. Data flow direction, number one, and, and um, Modes of transmission. Modes of transmission: do panechi, pane uh, analog, digital, serial, and what's it called parallel. But um, data flow direction now. That's where we get sim sim simplex, half 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 duplex, and and um, full duplex. So now I want us to hear this voice band, media band, and broadband. Uh, that's all, that's, that's not much of fun. Now let's talk about transmission media. What is transmission media? Anyone to give us what trans, yes, Nash. You end us up. Transmission media. Transmission medium. Okay, medium. Medium simply means um, a means in which two or more devices communicate. Means. So, Pamanga Mchiti, those guys who gave me examples with the printer and computer. Uh, it's it's not a very fair or accurate way of saying it, but when we're saying of transmission medium now, we're talking of two nodes communicating. What we mean by nodes is your computer is a node, your printer is a node, your cell phone is a node. It's a node on a network. So now we now come into introduction to networking and hence transmission media. So it, it does not necessarily mean this medium needs to be tangible. Let me let me explain again. Transmission medium could both be wired or wireless. Examples of transmission medium would got Bluetooth, we've got Wi-Fi, we've got radio frequency, we've got fiber, we've got axial, we've got twisted pair. Are uh, we still together? So, so it, 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 it doesn't necessarily mean it's something that you can touch, but as long as there's information that's being transmitted, they can fall from, from one node to the other, that becomes transmission. So, Pepe Pamunoti, we're creating an ad hoc, an ad hoc network, yeah, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, that, that you're actually using a certain medium to communicate. But in, in, in offices, we mainly use something that's called a twisted pair cable. So basically what this cable is, is it's there are wires that are twisting and that are covered in the sheet. The reason why they're twisted is because depending on whether you, it's RJ11, RJ12, or RJ45, 
RIJ 11 is 8, then RIJ 12 is 6, then RIJ 45 is 8, 8, 8, 8 cables. So that means those will be four pairs okay, of cable, of, of wires that will be twisted. They are twisted in such a way that they just something called attenuation. Attenuation becomes the rate at which um, signal is lost in a cable with regardless of effect of noise. So UTP has got a maximum distance of 100 meters until attenuation starts uh, 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 acting on that medium. Uh, Bluetooth starts getting attenuation from 100 meters, if I'm not mistaken. Wi-Fi, depending on the frequency that you're using, it could range from 100 meters to a kilometer or so. So it, it, it all depends on the medium that's there. So these cables are, as such, are twisted because one, it reduces attenuation. Two, it, 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 I'm gonna put it, 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 it. I'm, I'm looking for a perfect way to use, but it, it just prevents noise. It acts against noise. We say noise is anything that hinders communication. So if there is, let's say, an electromagnetic field between the cable, signal tends to be lost. If there's an, if there's an even just a magnetic field, signal is lost. So remember, imagine if you put that, your cable through a grinding mill, that thing produces vibrations and a lot of noise. So that in itself can affect um, quality of signal that you get. And like, have you ever noticed when you, um, if you configured your, your Wi Fi network and there are a lot of walls between you and your, your device, have you ever noticed that your signal tends to be weaker as you, as you travel the distance because the walls act as noise? walls tend to act as noise. So that's that's basically it about twisted pen. Coaxial cable, that is your cable. I don't know. Cable, yeah, you know about this here, you know about decoder. It end up by your satellite dish. That copper cable, you know, that cable with a little strand of copper within it. That's, that's, that's your coaxial cable. It's, it's slower, but it's way cheaper. So it's, it's no longer used in offices because, because of it being slow. Whereas twisted pair can reach up to 100, 100 megabits per second. For axial, there's no way of reaching that because it, it, it is greatly affected by noise. The other one is fiber optic. Um, you, you can read about fiber optic. You, you just discover that there are different types of fiber optics and each has, um, a different range that it can, it can. Basically, we've got a, 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 a glass strand between between um, the cable, and that that glass strand moves moves signal in forms of light. There is, a, I'm sure we all we all have heard of fiber optic here and there. Then from there, we've got satellite. You know, my satellite in Yamushan side. We've got radio frequency and waves. Each each type of media has got each own advantage and disadvantage. So it, it will be in your best interest to think to, to probably just read list advantages of each media and disadvantage of each media. So that you it, you're going to talk more in, in detail about this when you're doing networking, but it's 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 always ideal to have basic appreciation of, 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 of what it does. Uh, I do not think any of you know what infrared is. Does anyone know what infrared is? Infrared. Yeah. What yeah. is infrared? Infrared, it is a signal which was developed so that you can communicate, communicate with a with a receiver. Infrared, like a remote remote control, which have a, an infrared uh, bulb which sends the signal to the TV or anything which which is the receiver. Uh, the advantage of using an infrared is that it has a low emittance, it uses less power, but the disadvantage that it is affected by someone who, if it is blocked, it will not send any 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 signal. It it requires what's called the line of sight. 
So, so if those things don't physically uh, see each other, so to say, it, it won't be able to connect. I remember a long time ago, phones used to have infrared before Bluetooth. So you, when you want to transfer a song, you'd switch on infrared, you switch on infrared on the other phone, then you send, then you put those phones close to, close, close by so that each and every one can there's clear line of sight. So that's mainly it about um about infrared. Any any questions so far? Questions. Now I can entertain questions. If you don't have questions, like I said before, I can ask questions. All right. You guys don't have questions. Let me ask. Say, so, so I wanted to ask something. Yes, sir. Say, so, yes, you can. I wanted to ask. I, I wanted to ask a good. Day, what are the types of communication channels? Types of. Confuse me. You guys, you know, what? I've noticed in the group. You guys were being confused over over things that are not not so so. How can I put it? You you hear something, then someone says something, and you get very confused. The question wasn't so much to do with communication channels. The question was so it's so much to do with communication itself. We, 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 we were going to try and go through your assignments so that I show you. You were focusing on communication channel, but the question wanted you to focus on communication. We'll, we'll, we'll get back to it. We'll get back to it when we win. Uh, okay, okay. That's fine. Any, any more questions before I ask a question? Oh, okay, so what's the difference between microwave and radio wave? What's the difference between microwave and radio wave? Again, come again. What's the difference between microwave and radio wave? Yes, Alan. They, they, they differ in frequency. Frequency differs in amplitude. Yes, bless. Uh, microwave, I think microwave have uh, higher frequencies, which uh, you know, but in you know, it is a longer range than radio frequency. Radio frequency mostly it needs a substation where it will relay relay the, the frequency. For it is for micro micro you know it is in a, a longer range like 30 to 50 kilometers and the radio station the radio radio wave sorry so so where and when does the repeater now come in okay the repeater sorry uh i'm i'm getting a little bit confused because uh, i forgot where the repeater how many kilometers it needs another repeater also, right now, I know that. Well, it's fine. Don't, we're going to talk about network devices real soon. network. Okay, so so now we are now talking of network. We define the network as what? What's a network? Nice. Yes, proceed. Then. Blessing. Network, what's a network? Also, oh, uh, I forgot the uh, network. It is a, it's a, it's something which goes with interlinking the uh, communication channel. So they are, uh, I don't know, <laughs> I don't really know. I have to investigate a little bit more. Okay. Uh, anyone to give us a definition of the network? Uh, Brenda. 
Okay, uh, a network is a collection of computers that is save as mainframes, network devices and other peripherals connected to allow data sharing. Okay, that's, that's then good. An example of a network that's the internet. Internet, okay. The, the whole idea why network they created was because they wanted to communicate and share resources. So you discover that at the end of the day, it's about sharing resources. I've got, I've got a cloud, a data warehouse, or let's say a data, data warehouse where I can share facilities to you for storage, which is cloud. So for me, it's a physical device, but to you, you classify it as cloud. So it does not mean their servers literally in the cloud. It simply means someone has a, 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 a cloud is, is software as a service, infrastructure as a service, and platform as a service. So depending on the service that you need, it, it, it's, it's offered by someone who has a device that's sitting somewhere that offers that service. So basically, a network is in, in simple terms, it's a means of interconnecting two or more devices in the process of communication, communication or and or uh, sharing resources. I've got a printer on my computer. Someone next in the next office doesn't have a printer. So I link my computer and his computer so that he can print for wherever he is on my computer. So my, my, my computer acts as the server in this case, and his computer is the client. But if he has more space on his computer and he shares a, 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 his hard drive, then his computer acts as the server because it's giving me a service of storing, of storage, and I become the client. So at the end of the day, the purpose of a network is for communication and sharing resources. So what now becomes the difference between a network and internet? Difference between network and internet. Bana Shino. Bana Shino. Yes. Internet. Okay, yeah. Nick, Nick. Your hand is up, yes. Uh, I think internet is all about the co the global connection of com network computers. Uh, then uh, network network is on it can be locally uh networked. So that's where the difference can uh, manifest uh, is for my opinion. In my opinion, I mean so 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 the internet is a network also. Is a global connection. No, 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 yeah, it's a global connection of of computer networks, of internet computers, or whatever the case. But I'm asking, so is the internet a network? Yes, Dylan. So I'd say with uh, the difference between the internet and the, and the network, it's more of size than what they do, because the internet, it's a network made comprised of other networks. How the network it's we're just talking about a group of computers which can be maybe which can be in one building from which we form in a network. Whereas with the internet, it's where it's now global. All right. That's fine. That's fine. So if 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 the internet is a connection of a connection of internet, internet is a global connection of networks. So doesn't it make it a network as well? Yes. So it's a network. Yes. All right. So basically, what, what what I'm just trying to say is, uh, a, 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 a square is a rectangle, but a rectangle is not a square. Uh, or is it a square is a rectangle? Yeah, a square is a rectangle, but a rectangle is not a square. Oh, yeah. One is bigger than the other. 
the network encompasses everything. But we say internet now. We're saying it's, it's those little computers, and it. You, 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 with, with you, you're now going to get to understand what we mean by 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 network and internet. Because, all right, let me do this. Let me do this. It, now, I'm, I'm, we're, we're going back to our network just now. We've got a network topology. So a network topology is how to arrange and configure one physical computer with other computers in a certain network. So you're going to get the word network and it. You're going to get it often. So a network topology is just a way of arranging those computers. So depending on the size and nature of your organization, you, you have different topologies to, to, to your spoiled to different topologies. So for, for the purposes of, of this discussion, I would want you guys to give me what this topology is. I don't know, can you see it? What's, what's the name of that topology? Sir? Yes, yeah, yeah. That would be a ring topology. A ring? Yes. Is it not called a token ring? Sir? Is it not called a token ring? I was not really sure. I was not aware of the token ring term. Okay. Um, yes. In, you, our, you, you. in our module, it is just within a, a ring topology. All right. This is the reason why I'm not referencing the module a lot. It's because I, I want you guys to know exactly what this is. It's called a token ring. Okay, thank you. So, why all the token? Um, imagine if if computer A wants to, let's say that that's a laser printer. Imagine if one computer in the node wants to talk to a laser print, wants to print. And it. So imagine, let's say, computer in the first side near router. I don't know. Can you see my case? Right. So imagine one computer wants to talk to the laser jet. It's it's quite easy, and it, it's a case of just connecting to it. But he is moving through one or two computers just to get to that to that um printer and what happens if two or three computers want to access that laser printer at the same time there's going to be a lot of collision collision is whereby you you request for a certain service and the, the two or more devices request for a certain uh service and they end up colliding and either the first one is given preference the last one is given preference or all of them are not given preference depending on how you configure your network or how that 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 device is configured so this moves in one direction if it's clockwise uh, the, the communication so so to remedy those collisions this token ring was designed in such a way that only communication moves in one direction, normally anti-clockwise. So let's say we're moving from the server going to our left. There's one computer, there's two computers, there's three computers. Then there is a laser printer. Then on your right, there's four and there's five. Then six is seven. So for for purposes of avoiding collisions, the, the token moves around the network. 
So that token, it's like a pattern. Pattern rare Ramuno Ramuno Magisare pa ma parile. The person with the button is the one that that sprints runs. Everyone without the button doesn't do anything. So in our case, the printer sends around a button. Which does anyone wants to use? Does does anyone want to use this service? So that button moves to the computer on the right. And if that first computer wants to print, it holds on to the button. Then when it's holding on to the button, it can freely use that service. Can use that service without, because it's like on a microphone in Diano Tower. If you don't have the mic, you can't, I, I will speak. So if, if the first computer finishes using that button, he, he later puts it in the network. If that other computer doesn't want to use it, it just passes it on. So this is why it's called a token ring, because it utilizes something called a token. So if you don't have that token, you're not, you don't have means or rights to the system to communicate. That's why it's called a token. So the next one is called a bus. And if you notice, um, we we going to discover we we going to talk about what a ruta is in, in the next slides to come so what of what about this topology? No, it's it's loading. It's loading. Uh, the hub. Okay. Um, I think this one is called a star, a star topology, whereby. There is one uh, central point that transmits data to to other devices or computers. That's my own. Okay, uh, you're correct. You're correct, man. That is a star topology. A star topology is whereby every device has equal access to every other service or device. So, Murgona again is that device called the root. So that device separates our lead to network from the rest of the network. Remember, we said internet is a global connection of networks. So we have this little network, Wange, that little network, Harare, that little network, Cincinnati, that little network, Hawaii, that little network, China. All of those combined constitute to, uh, to the internet. So that router that you see there, it separates the network, global network, to the local network, which is why everything behind the router becomes local area network. Everything in front of the router becomes wide area and it, so coming back to our topology nowadays i i can bet you anything in, in fact i would i would gladly fork out my kidney if i, I find an organization that still uses a hub that's one of those obsolete technologies. It was slow because it, if the connection to the router is a one meg, that means when we have one, two, three, four, five devices, they, they, they share that one meg link. So that means it's 1,000 divided by six. 1,224 divided by six. So from there, there's 
um, someone clever decided, no, you know, this is a very slow device. Let's create something that will place the hub because it's slow. So they created something called the switch. How a switch originated, it originated from back when the phone was, was invented. They would literally take, if you, you want a connection from maybe here to Gwanda, and you call him from maybe Vic Falls, they would literally take your cable, remove that cable and plug it into someone who's, who's, who's to, into your destination. So that's where you get the word operator, can I help you? Because you would say, do I want to talk to house number? Chaka, 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 chaka. Then they remove a cable and literally, your cable, literally place it on, on, your, on your cable. So that process was called switching. So that's how the word switch came about. So that switch for us, it's a level two device. We are going to discuss what the difference between a level two and a level three device is in the later slides. So basically, it's, that switch becomes the center of, of, of um, the center of that network. The advantages and disadvantages, because if that switch goes, it more functions, the network is done. That's one obvious um, um, drawback. But the other advantage, the advantages are many. Because number one, there, there is no collision when you're doing it because anyone has got equal access to, to, to that. Whereas, remember when we're saying the token ring, if you don't have the token, you don't process anything. So if someone holds onto the token and they're not using the token, the network is, 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 hold, is held at ransom by that node. So with this, anyone can process in equal, anyone has got equal and op, equal and opportune time to access any resource on the network. So to avoid collision, the, the devices listened to the network to check if there's anyone who is transmitting or requesting the device. So when you listen and you discover that there's no one, then you try attempt to, to communicate. By our three-way handshake, Lima, wait, says it's request, then it, after request, then there's an acknowledgement. So if it listens, then there's someone transmitting. It, 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 it is given a random time to listen again. So this process is called career sense. I, I, I don't know mid, I don't know whether you have heard of it. You know, this is my CD and this is my CA. Uh, career sense media access. So you listen to access the media. And when you send that random package, if there is collision and you're given in a time, a random time to access, it becomes collision avoided. But when you listen, when, you, when you've already sent your, your packets, it becomes collision detection. Because the other one is avoiding collisions, the other one is merely detecting a collision. But the, you, you get to, to understand more about this. Now I've got this topology. What do you call this topology? What do you call this topology? Dylan. Father, what do you call that, that topology? Uh, it's a mesh topology. The mesh topology. OK. Um, Advantages and disadvantages of mesh. Number one, for obvious reasons, it's expensive because it requires a lot of care. It's, it's expensive, number one. Okay. Number two, advantage. If one cable fails, the whole network is still, there's no one point of fail. Anyway, that's fine. You, 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 you read about 
about advantages and disadvantages of, 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 um, of a mesh. So we have that monstrosity on the screen. What topology is that? Anyone? Uh, Dylan, okay, let's hear from Brent. Brent. Uh, that's a hybrid, hybrid topology. Why is it called a hybrid? Um, it's called a hybrid topology because uh, it comprises of two or more different types of topologies and it is reliable and scalable, yeah. but kind of simultaneously and a costly one. Okay, scalable, it simply means it, it, it will be easy for you to add another node on there. Yes, sir. Okay, so, I've, so what if I've got three star connections connected using a star? Will that be a hybrid or not? All right, that's, that's just food for thought. Um, moving on, types of network, we talked about this. We've got a local area network, which is the one that is within behind the router, and we've got a wide area network, which is uh, which is likely bigger because in terms of size and um, your metropolitan now lies between your, your, your one and your LAN, and it becomes your MAN. I'm sure all of this is in your is in your, your, your module. Now, I have an interesting diagram here. It's a very interesting diagram, that one. Um, this is networking 101. So, I think is the IEE came up with a way to standardize communication because the, the, they wanted the, the, the networks and protocols to be to be uniform. So they came up with a model on how to try and achieve this. So the application layer becomes uh, physical layer becomes layer one and application layer becomes layer seven. So each and every aspect of IT falls within this. Literally each and every aspect, be it software development, be it graphics, be it hardware, be it networking, be it cloud, be it whatever, whichever the case, everything falls within this diagram. So the acronym here is all people seem to need data processing. So Kajinora, it, it becomes easier for you to remember what, what each layer represents. Okay, so the bottom layer is the physical layer. That is where we are saying the tangible things like wires and cables. And that's where the not tangible, the media rather, the cables. And this is where we have ones and zeros. The hub and repeaters are in that layer because they do not perform layer two, which is the data link layer uh, functions. Because the data link layer takes those ones and zero, converts those into frames. So a hub lacks in that. So my frames, Edu, the data link layer, that is where you find a switch. A switch is a layer two device and my bridge. It's a layer two device because you get proper explanation when you're doing network. Because if, if I'm doing, if I'm taking you through networking, this will be minimum three hours. Just this diagram, it will be minimum three hours explaining this diagram. So from the data link layer going onwards, we've got a network layer. The network layer now, that is where your routers are housed. And the datagram that is transmitted, they are called packets. 
from there we have got the transport layer this is where you have end-to-end -end communication whether you're going to use tcp or udp so already now you see we're talking of packets of, of protocols on network layer we've got um data link layer we've got ethernet we've got ppp and it then we've got ip and we've got ipsec we've got icmp and, and the like and who transport we've got tcp and udp basically what we're just trying to say is um is it connection oriented communication or connection based communication this all this is to communication so what we mean by connection less and connection pool is do the device communicate with each with establish a communication a link before they send communication let me give you an example when your phone rings you need to answer that becomes connection oriented connection and it, when 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 you are communicating using your connection udp is not really worried about whether you receive all the information as long as the sender sends doesn't care whether the receiver gets information or not an example we talked about this we talked about this becomes what a uh, simplex communication or, or or half duplex whereby we're saying it's not worried about quality as long as zbc pockets broadcast doesn't care who receives the, the, the broadcast as long as EO, yeah, two minutes, so that becomes connectionless. Where then and they use a protocol called UDP. Then TCP now becomes connection, connection oriented, whereby you do that three-way handshake lima we talked about to establish a connection between two, two, two receivers. So uh, TCP is also uh, worried about quality. Take this for an example. Um, if it rains and the quality of reception is bad the sender is not worried about what you receive as long as the sender sends so that's why you get kind of a dish paper you get scratches you get uh bleh. there's funny quality and you get those funds you you want it a dish when my dish can every tv in terms of showers so that becomes um same applies if per phone, if I'm calling, you can take a break. The phone in get a basarayu in sending. So whether you receive things in good quality or not, the the, the, the sender is not worried. But but TCP now becomes a situation where there's quality involved. You you have never sent a WhatsApp message or a WhatsApp a WhatsApp picture with with a missing part or a WhatsApp video, video via WhatsApp rather, with, with an element that's not there. Everything is intact. So everything, if you send a video that's two minutes, the receiver receives a video that's two minutes. But then, where, where, whether, whether there's good connection, there's bad connection, you get, so by virtue of one having quality issues that means it can be slow that's why you, when you send a video or a picture it loads not a load day to tango 10 days but udp uh, for tv station it's fast then from the session layer it's, it's there for syncing and sending ports that's where you get my ports and my, my ports and sockets and i got it so from channel number ports you get to here um like which is why http chains in the port niki port 8880 once ftp in a port number g and the like presentation becomes um syntax layer that's where it's mainly concerned with how you're going to do whatever it is you're doing if you're sending a jpeg if you're opening an mp4 or you or you or you're trying to organize a session so that's that's what presentation layer application now becomes end user layer do pay look at my web browser so this is the simplest possible way i can explain these seven layers 
But bear in mind, these seven layers, there have been books written about these seven layers. So for now, all you need to know is what each layer is and roughly what each layer does. Because if we try to dive deep into it, I, I swear we will not be able to finish. But any any questions so far on 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 TC on on the OS OS model? Uh, uh, like I said before, if you don't have questions, I I have questions for you. So it's, it's best if you <laughs> ask your questions first. Ladies and gentlemen, questions. Yes, Dylan, your hand is up. Kassan Chen's Giga. Guys, hello. And Chen's Giga. First, I say, yeah, there's a bad accident. We can hear you. I, I need questions on this TCPIP layer. On the awesome, awesome, awesome order. Uh, All right. It's okay. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine if you don't have questions. Uh, Say, I have uh, one. I have one question. Oh. Yeah, cool. I want to ask why this. Um, physical data link and network layers are called media layers. Are, are you sure they're all those three or they're just the bottom two? Mm, actually, for the one that I've seen, the model that I've seen, they are indicated as media layers and the above four are indicated as host layers. You, you have, aren't you, aren't you uh, referring to TCP IP. Um, no, I'm not so sure. No, because there are two different models. There's model and there's TCP IP. That's the models. OSI model. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um, the bottom layer is uh, the bottom. Okay. Um, the bottom layers. Those three bottom layers. They are. Those are mostly the physical layers. They, they, they've got the gadgets that you can physically touch. So, so for, for them to be called the media layer, probably it's because they, that's where most of the transmission is being done. Because if each, each and every layer has got a specific task it does from the layer one to the layer seven. So, so when you've got one layer, the, there will never be a situation whereby you've got a layer that's no function. You discover, you hear, you start hearing words like uh, encapsulation and decapsulation. You start hearing like header and tail, header and footer, header and tailer. So, so there, there's really a lot that's, that, that is going to be needed for you on this layer, on this loss layer. But for the purposes of this course, I would just want you to know what those layers are and on roughly just what each layer does. Not in detail, because trust me, that's not detail. Right. We have already used up our two hours for, for the tutorial. So for now, let's just dive where we're officially we're through with our 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 um, tutorial, but I, I just want us to, to, to uh, I, I promised you some tips. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We definitely do. Don't, 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 um we can't record them but we'll just try okay let me just record them it's fine so for for my questions if a question requires you to if a question is worth five marks there's no need for you to write 
paragraph. It's five marks. Probably one mark for definition and probably three paragraphs. One mark for definition, then the other one for basic explaining. So I, I prefer points. So if you give me 10 points on a certain question, you get your 10 marks. But if you give me five, you now need to explain those five for you to be able to get 10. If you've got a question that requires you to uh, differentiate between A and B, I would suggest just create a table. That's the easiest way you can get marks. If you try and say number one, number two, number three, you, you might get confused and miss unnecessary marks. But if you create a table, you, you are home and dry. It's easier for you to, to, to now, um, to now uh, explain this negative report. So uh, 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 most of the things that are, are needed. Oh yeah, we, we didn't talk about LED and LCD. You, you guys, you, you read about it in your assignments, so I'm sure. I'm sure Papu are your own time. You don't need to worry much about the exam. Everything we've talked about from assignment, from tutorial one to tutorial two, assignment one, assignment two. If you read, if you read widely of, around that, trust me, you, you won't have much problems with the exams. So what I need you guys to do is um, find um, um, groups for so that you can you can you can discuss.